Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're continuing our quest to solve the 2020 final on heat and mass transfer. We already did number one, number two, number three, and number four. This one has gone too. And now we move on to question number five. This is where there's actually 12 marks available for this question. It's a harder question indeed. And it's a long question too. So what I might do is I might actually break, break this video into two. Uh, and I might want to show you guys two different ways of doing it, of solving this question. Problem statement reads, air at 25 degrees Celsius flows inside a 20 centimeter inside diameter tube, which has a wall thickness of 10 mils. The surrounding environment temperature is 10 degrees Celsius. The convective heat transfer coefficient inside the tube is 15 and that uh, outside is 5. The thermal conductivity of the tube is 1.5 and the external emissivity is 0.95. Assuming negligible internal radiation, determine the heat transfer rate through the tube per length and the outside surface temperature of the tube. So we have to find out two different things, right? One is our Q, more precisely our Q per L, right, per unit length. That's the first part of the question. And the second one is what is the outside temperature? So right outside T over outside, right outside of the tube. Now, one thing interesting here is that the, I guess what makes this question hard is that we are given the external emissivity of the tube as 0.95, so 95%, and we're told to ignore the internal radiation. So it's a problem that asks us to include radiation in the heat that heat transfer is occurring through, we know, convection and conduction, right? Because there's a fluid inside, fluid outside, and the tube that is a solid. So that means that we're actually accounting for all three heat transfer modes in this question. Uh, we're ignoring radiation internally, however, we need to consider outside, right, externally. So let me, I already drew, you know, the two views for this tube. Let's go down here. This is from our previous questions, on the previous videos. Question three, and there you go, question five. Okay, so I already drew, you know, we have 20 centimeters in diameter. So that means that the radius of this guy is 10 centimeters. That's what I put over here, so 10 centimeters. And then there's a thickness. This guy has a thickness over here of one millimeter, right? So that means that a, a vector that leaves the inside and goes all the way to the outer surface of this tube would have a length of 11 centimeters. That, would, that is a one mil thickness plus the 10 centimeters in radius internally. That's where this 11 comes from. Okay, so we have 10 centimeters as R1 and 11 centimeters as R2. What else? The inside is air at 25, the outside is air at 10. So we know that Q is going to be flowing from the inside to the outside before we do any math whatsoever. We can be sure of that. We can also be sure that at this point here on the outer surface of the tube, that is on this part here of the tube, we're going to have not only conduction taking place, but also radiation, right? So that's why I put here QR for radiation plus Q of the sum of R's to, you know, uh, describe all the other energy. Now, if we were to draw a simplified diagram for this, we would have, you know, the inside here on this side, on the left-hand side, then we would have an internal resistance due to convection, and that is the one for the internal air there, then a conductive resistance, for the actual tube, the metallic or whatever material the tube is, a external convective resistance due to the fluid outside, right? However, we also have the radiation factor. So in reality, what we would have is we have a competing system because heat at this point here can choose whether it wants to flow out due to radiation or due to convection, right? But we have no information about that radiation as of yet. So there are different ways you can go about solving this problem. I'm gonna show you the first way. It's uh, long, there, there are similar ways, it's just the assumption you do in the beginning changes and then you know the, the, the actual numbers you get, they change along the way, but the actual solving is exactly the same. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do the following. To be able to calculate the radiation leaving, that is this guy here, right? what I call QR, if I wanna calculate QR, I know I can calculate that by relating the emissivity of this tube, the stefan boltzmann constant, the area, the outside area that is, outside area, and then the difference in temperature between the outside of the pipe, right, so the 
the one of the things that we need to find out in this problem to the fourth minus t infinity to the fourth both in kelvin right and then this is all great i know this is a constant i have this this was given as 0.95 i can calculate the external area with that 11 centimeter radius that's all fine i have t infinity but i don't have this fellow here okay what i can do here is i can assume that guy because one thing that i can be certain before i do any math is that my t outside will be definitely greater than 10 right and definitely smaller than 25. i know that for a fact just because of the way that heat flows right so i know for a fact that this temperature here right so this guy here which is my t naught or t o for t outside is between 10 and 25 celsius so i can assume that guy the assumption i'm going to make is i'm going to first start with this simple system that i drew here ignoring completely radiation okay and with that i'm going to find what value i get for this guy here once i get this guy then i'm going to calculate radiation and take it into account and then i'll see how that changes and i'll have to do you know several times iterating several times until we get a convergence or i hope to get a convergence so that's a game plan all right so let's see how what that would look like let me go ahead and start by calculating the resistances. So I'm going to calculate this guy here, which I'm going to go ahead and call R1. So it's going to be my R1. It's going to be my R2. This will be my R3. Okay, those guys, we've done that several times already. That's no mystery. The ones due to convection will be one, uh, one over convective coefficient in the area. In this case, the internal area, right? So that, that was given. The internal convective coefficient was given as five, what, 15, 15. And then the internal area is, you know, this area here right and that is related to r1 the one with 10 centimeters so that will be 2 pi r so conference times 10 to the 10 to the minus 2 to have it in meters and then multiply by the l the length i don't know the length i don't know this length here i have no idea what this length is however i do know that we um, are to calculate q per unit length right it says quite clearly in the um, problem statement so i'm going to go ahead and say my length is one meter and I'm going to take care to, you know, highlight this for myself, you know, put a, a big star here so that I remember this as I calculate my final answer, because whatever I get is going to be per unit length, right? So where I have L, I'm only going to substitute by 1. As long as I remember that I did that, I'll be fine to account for it in the final answer. So here I got 0 0.1061. And that's going to be Kelvin per watt. And then obviously we have we would have still have the meter there because we have multiplied by the meter, so it will be in reality Kelvin meters per watts, right? Um, then R2, that's a conduct uh, sorry, yeah, conductive resistance, and that's gonna be the natural log of R, the out external radius and the over the internal areas, the ratio between the two, natural log of that, divided by my two pi k L. Right? In this case, k was given as 1.5, so 1.5 for k conductivity of the pipe. And then L, we're assuming to be 1. And this gave me 0 .0, 0 0.01011. Same deal with the units, right? It would be Kelvin per watts, but because I'm putting one meter, it would have the meter there, right? Um, I am using, like I said, I'm using, I'm using the assumption of one meter. So I'm assuming there is a one meter multiplying there, so I don't have to carry this uh, M with me as I go. But it's good to remember that everything calculated is going to be per meter. Next one. R3, R3 is also conductive, so also 1 over convective coefficient, but now the outer area, right, the external area, and this is uh, 5, it's given as 5 times 2 pi times the external radius, it's 11, and then the 1 again for the length of the pipe, and this gave me 0.29, approximately 0.29. Note this is the greatest resistance. Okay, and what is what can we do now? Well, if this were the case, if it was you know this simple, then you know the sum of resistances would give me a, an equivalent resistance, this will be the equivalent of the whole system, and this would be 0 0.4 40, 40, 40, 50, 56 um, kilowatt per watt, and then I could calculate you know Q would just be the delta T divided by this single R equivalent, and this delta T is the 25 minus 10, so the 15 Kelvins or Celsius, divided by my point 4056. What did I get here? I got this to be 36.984, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is about 37. Okay, and this is the point, like this is not the, the, the ending of the question, but this is the point that we would need to remind ourselves that this has to be 
per meter because of the one meter length we assumed at the beginning. Okay, but the story is not over here, right? Because we know that this is incorrect. We know this, we're just using this as a parameter. What we want to find is this fellow here, T out. To do that, there's a couple ways you can do it. I can consider this single resistance here, or I can consider these two guys here, right? It's up to me because whatever I do is going to be exactly the same. One way I'm going to go between 25 and T naught. And then I'm going to go between the 10 and T naught. And then I'll only have one resistance there. You can choose whichever rocks you're both. I'm going to go ahead and choose these two. And for these two, the reason why I'm choosing these two is because once I include that, you know, parallel resistance there, this value is going to be uh, not this value changing, but then the equivalent of that is going to be changing. So just, you know, for my own sake, I chose to do these two here. It's no big deal. Either way, it's going to be the same thing. So if we consider these two resistances, the delta T between these two resistances will be equal to the Q that we found plus R uh, times R1 plus R2, right? We know everything. So we know this is, you know, 37, we that the 0.161 and the 0.01011. Uh, so this allows us to calculate the delta T, and the delta T that we get over here is 4.29789 and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to approximate this to 0.3 degrees Celsius. Okay, and if it's 4.3 between um, the 25 and T naught, oops, I went too far, 25 and T naught, that means that my T naught is just 25 minus whatever I found there, right? So that means that my T naught or T outside will just be the 25 minus the 4.3, which gives me 20.7 degrees Celsius. Okay, and this is the temperature that I found by assuming there was no radiation taking place whatsoever. And I know that's incorrect, but now this is the interesting part because now that I have the T out, I can calculate what's the radiation there. And with that, I can uh, create an equivalent convective resistance so that I can now find you know, the next integrated process. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's say if I want to find no let's just this is for radiation, right? So for radiation. Um, if I want to find radiation, I can find out um, it's E sub B for some books, but you can go ahead and call Q for radiation like I did in the beginning. This is just going to be the emissivity times the outer area. That's where the radiation is taking place. And the stepping constant and then the difference between T out to the fourth minus T infinity to the fourth. Remember, we didn't have this, now we do. We know it's probably not correct, but we can use it to at least to calculate how things are going to change, and then we can do it once, once again. So this is 0.95 over here. This is, the, again, the 2 pi um, times 11 millimeters times the, times the 1. Then this is 5.67. Yeah, times 8 minus 8. And here, we just need to remember that this, we cannot plug this in as Celsius. We have to plug it as Kelvin, right? But what I generally do in these cases when I know I'm going to be doing this several times is just do it. It's 20 point, what was it, 20.3? 20 20.7. 20 plus the 273. And then that to the fourth. That's how I plug in my calculator anyways. And then this is just the, the 10, right? The 10 outside and the 273. So I'm going to go ahead and do I'm going to go ahead and do 283 in your calculator straight off the bat without having to worry about that. What did I get here? So the Q that I got for radiation in this case here is about 38.22 watts. Again, this is watts per meters because of the whole thing, but about. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, think about this way. Let's pretend for a second that this radiation is actually leaving in the form of convection. Just because we can, with that, create, you know, a... Uh, an additional resistance for ourselves. So let's pretend that the Q radiation is actually leaving as convection, and if it's leaving as convection, that will be just you know the coefficient times the outer area times the simple delta T. And the reason why I do that is because then I can calculate you know what will be the equivalent equivalence sub equivalent here equivalent co convective coefficient to account for this radiation. Well, that would be the 38.22 divided by the outer area divided by the delta t, right? So the outer, outer area is this guy here. And you see this is actually silly. I should have just left it in terms of um, heat flux. But let's do it complete, and then when I show you the other way, I'll just you know, do it the fast the fast way, take the fast route. 
uh, divided by delta t, and in this case, delta t is uh, 20.7 minus 10. Okay, so what will be the equivalent here? I got about 5.16, and it keeps going. And I actually rounded it up to 5.17. So it's 1681 keeps going, so just 17 is good enough. And then units would be units as always. Okay, so what can I do now? Well, I can go back now. I can grab this. 